Welcome to Northridge Community Church. Our mission is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. And so that means whether a person is still skeptical or whether or not they've been a believer for decades, we want to walk with you hand in hand to help you take the next step with Jesus Christ. And so any questions that you have, anything we can do to help you take that next step, please let us know. Hey, good morning, church. I want you to go ahead and stand up, starting a little bit differently today, just because I, I, I had this thought in my mind this week, and it's a question, and, is, and it's, why do I come here? Why do I come here? And I, and I started thinking about, like, I want to ask that, I was, I'm asked that question for you as well, is why do you come here? And my hope and my heart, and we're going to read something in the Psalms just to get us oriented towards worshiping an almighty God, my heart is that it's to meet with the Father. It's to meet with the Father. It's to push, push past checking a box that you've got to go to church. Push past uh, this is just what we do every single week. If the weather's okay, then we come to church. It's to push past anything that has an apathetic feel. And it's, it is the Almighty God wants to meet with you today. And we get an opportunity to worship Him. And I want to read out of Psalm 138 just to help prepare us. And then we're going we're gonna to jump into it. This is what it says. This is David. He says, I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your love and your faithfulness, for you have exalted above all things your name and your word. When I called, you answered me. You made me bold and stout-hearted. May all the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. I love the song that we're about to sing, and I want you to feel, I want you to feel the permission to have freedom when it comes to worshiping an almighty God. Jesus, come into this place. We want to put our focus on you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Come on.
of mercy, please come rescue me. Northridge this morning. Really, really glad you're here. I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but your heart makes a noise that no other heart can make in this world. If you weren't here this morning, it wouldn't sound the same to God, right? So seriously, really glad you're here today. Uh, 
in the seat in front of you or maybe the seat you sat on if you're up here in the front row, um, there's a little connect card. We use it as a way to communicate uh, in a couple of different ways, multiple different ways. One is we'd love to know you're here today. Uh, it's also a way for you to communicate next steps or questions. And maybe that is your next step is, hey, I've got some questions. I've been, been here for a little while and I'd like to know more, right? Uh, maybe it's, hey, I want to step in and, and help out in certain ways. Maybe you have something really difficult in your life and you need some prayer. You can put that on here. Uh, as you're way out the double doors, there's a little basket. You drop these off on your way out this morning. The prayer requests get prayed for. Please feel free to provide updates on those. Or maybe you're just like super excited about something and you want to put that down too. Always love to hear those things as well. I want to let you know... Um, I've had this great week here this last week. Uh, part of my job, I get to ride bikes sometimes, and I got to ride my bike on the Creeper Trail for the first time ever. And it was, I mean, it was going nuts with the colors, and it was amazing. There was this one point where uh, this crane, I, I'm not a bird guy, but this crane, I think, was like flying alongside as we were riding along the river. And I just was like, the whole time, had this big goofy grin because I'm worshiping God. You know, just like, are you serious right now? Like, you made this, right? And then the crane goes by. I'm like, you're just showing off now, right? And uh, just a great time of worship. Got to ride another beautiful trail later in the week. And um, just couldn't, kind of couldn't wait to get here this morning and worship. And, you know, I've been part of doing the, the welcome and, and talking about giving and uh, for, you know, most, most of this year anyway. And so just kind of, okay, how does that all fit in maybe? I want you to think about a time. Everybody in here either has been or maybe still is a kid, right? Imagine a time, and you can, whatever side you're on, maybe you're on the kid side or the parent side, but go out to eat at a restaurant. There's this little kid, uh, what do you want? I want, the, I want the burger and the fries and the drink, whatever, right? And then you all sit down and, and you didn't get fries even though you're the parent, right? And, and ultimately you paid for the fries. And you go to reach for the fries, and the little kid's like, no, they're mine, right? And A, we've all been that kid. We might even be that r adult right now, right? Th those are my fries, <laughs> like seriously. <laughs> but Im imagine that, right? Imagine that that's what we do to God sometimes. No, that's mine, right? And when I, I've seen that in my own kids, I, I know it from my own life, but one of the best parts of being a parent is watching kids be excited about giving gifts, it doesn't matter who they're to, but when you see that excitement of a kid, like, oh, I can't wait to give this gift, right? That is a joy. And I think that's the, that's a joy that God likes to see in us when we joyfully give. And there's multiple ways to give around here. It is part of who we are at this church. It's part of following Jesus. He doesn't have our whole heart if we're not joyful givers at, at the end of the day, right? You can give online, you can give through the app, drop it in the basket on the way out if you like to give that way whatever it is and and whether it's money whether it's time whether it's the talents that God has gifted you with this is a church that is generous and and I don't know about you but I love being part of it so let's pray dear God you are amazing we come to gather in your name to worship you to sing your praises because of who you are and the things you've done whether it's the things you've done for all of creation, whether it's things you've done in a very personal way for each and every one of us, whether we're in a spot at the moment where we can recognize it or not, you have acted because you are love. And in the midst of that, we, we sing praises. And we always sing praises, most of all, for the gift of Jesus his death and resurrection for the forgiveness of our sins and the chance to live with you forever in your presence. We pray all of this in his name. Amen.
this morning. God, I pray that we don't just go through the motions, that we don't just come into this place and just sing these songs, God, but we come into this place and we worship the one true king, the one true God, the one that sent his son down to this earth to live life with us and to die for our sins, God. God, I pray that you can help us see that this morning. We love you. Praise you. In Jesus' name. Good morning, church. How we doing? Everybody awake? Everybody ready to go? Hey, I want to do something. I want to do something right before we jump into uh, the message today. I would love just to take a second and just observe Veterans Day. If you've got, if you're a veteran or maybe you've lost someone uh, that served in the military, would you just stand up? I just want to say thank you. Will you stand up just to be, just to, as part of the, yeah, seriously. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I mean, wow, we owe you and your family uh, a ton of gratitude. So thank you for what you've been willing to sacrifice. Hey, today we're in um, the middle of a series, and we're talking about a war uh, in our minds. Uh, which, you know, honestly, if if it could be, if I can be very real with you, uh, this idea, this thought, that, you know. Uh, that there's something going on in our minds that are battling between one another, that are battling for your mind, that are battling for you. Uh, that it, it's a it's a somewhat of a newer idea. The science behind it, our discovering, uh, you know, the the ideas behind uh, this idea is probably 30, 40, maybe 50 years old. But then talking about it, maybe just in the last 15, 20 years. Uh, about this idea that there's some entanglement going on inside of our minds. And I don't know about you, but I can look back and see where uh, there were battles fought between thoughts of fear and thoughts of faith. Uh, there were battles that were fought, you know, that, you know, there were thoughts that were bound by depression. And then there were thoughts over here going, yeah, but I know Christ who conquers all, and I know what he says, and, and they're battling each other. They're battling each other, trying to win over my mind. I don't know if you can relate to that at all. Uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's not that. Maybe it's thoughts that are like lies from the enemy. We talked about that last week. Lies from the enemy. Uh, you know, and then they fight between thoughts that demolish strongholds because those thoughts come from God's truth. And, and you can go back and you listen to last week. I, I believe if, you, if you're someone that struggles and you just always allow every thought to come in and you never look at what you're thinking about and go, is that from the enemy? Is that a lie? Is that something that's going to bind me? If you never have that thought process, if you, if you never have that um, behavior about yourself as far as your mental health goes, I would encourage you to go back and listen to that. But I also, this series as we progress through it, I believe is going to help you out. Because it does come, you know, there are things that demolish the lies of the enemy that come from God's word. But you have to be in God's word. To, ha to know what the truth that's going to demolish the things that can bind you mentally, you've, you have to know it. Right? We started the series off going, and I've referred back to it, the Psalm 23 table. You've got to sit at the table and delight in the Lord. You got to sit at the table and know that this this book is breath on page written so that you can walk in. We just sang about it in freedom. 
so that you can know your creator and the creator can know you. And so there, there are ways to demolish the strongholds, but you've got to know God's word to be able to do that. And no matter where you find yourself on the journey, what's true is that there is a war going on inside of our minds. There's a battle. And we're not debating that. Some of, us are, some of us were like, well, you know, my mind's pretty free and clear and has always been, and it's, it's light. It's light work. Others of us are going, I can't believe it sounds like he's always talking to me every single Sunday through this series because of what I'm battling and what I'm going through. But we all find ourselves on that same journey. There is a battle going on inside of our minds. And I believe that God doesn't want to simply help us, but he wants to transform us. He doesn't want to just give you anecdotes. He actually wants to do uh, something different. He wants to change you, give you a new way of thinking. I would even say it this way, and I'll, and I'll read what Paul says that, that backs this up. He wants to give you a new mind. He wants to give you a new mind. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. How are we transformed? How are we transformed? You ready? We're transformed by the renewing, say it with me, by the renewing of your mind. He wants to give you a new mind, a new way of thinking. Let me just tell you that this is not mystical, magical. It is miraculous. This isn't crazy talk. We, again, I'm, I'm still reviewing some things we talked about because we've talked about how you can have a, a, a certain way about yourself that, that you can do some things. We're going to jump into it really heavily today that create new neuropathways in your mind, a, a.k.a give you a new way of thinking. Replace the way of your old thinking. All right? This is, I mean, it's so cool to me that science is our way of just discovering what God's already put into order. And so he says, yeah, he wants to renew your mind. He wants to transform you by the renewing of your mind. And now we know how, how do we get a new, a new way of thinking? How do we get new things going on within our minds? We begin to replace... We begin to replace the stronghold thoughts with the, the thoughts of God's truth, and we can start creating new neural pathways. We talked about that. We talked about how the enemy feeds you lies until you're completely taken out altogether uh, from what God wants to do within your life. We can be proactive in making sure that doesn't happen. Many of you, maybe it's not lies, maybe it's, maybe it's a thought of anger, maybe it's a thought that has created bitterness, uh, maybe, maybe it's not lies, maybe it's something that a circumstance, but it's created something in you that now you've got a lot of anger in your life, whatever it may be, and again, we're going to talk about some of those things, we're going to talk about negative thoughts in the weeks to come as well, maybe not lies, but just negativity, just sitting in the negativity of some things within your life, and so be, just be on the lookout for that, Chris Miller's going to talk about that next week actually, and I'm pretty excited about it. But no matter what you may be dealing with with this, maybe many of you have been dealing for so long that your mind has absolutely been hijacked and taken captive, and you're not sure what to do. You're not sure what to do. Last week I talked about it's time to take prisoners. This week, if you, if you came out of that going, I think my mind has been taken prisoner. I think I don't know what to do because it's, I've been dealing with this for so long. This week, it's how to take my mind back. It's how to take my mind back. If you feel like you're so bound and I don't, you know, I, I don't know how to get out of where I'm at mentally, it's time to take our mind back. We spoke briefly last week on how every thought and decision, it creates new neural pathways, which is your mind telling you whether or not something is good or bad and to go that direction, to, to make that decision. Okay, sometimes it's, it's, it's a pattern, and that's how we can get stuck in bad behaviors. We're just more secure in bad behaviors because we know them, all right? But when you, when you do something that creates uh, like a dopamine hit that's good in your life, and the brain goes, oh, I like that, I want to keep doing that, I want to keep accomplishing that, I want to keep going in that direction, your brain starts to create new, new, new neuro, that's really hard to say, neuro pathways, new neuro pathways. And it says, I want to keep going that direction, keep doing that. Well, to take our minds back, if we're going to do this, we're going to need training. We're going to need training. And it's not, here's the thing about training your mind. It's not just what you do with it. It's not, it's not like, oh, well, you know, some of you, you've been doing like mind puzzles for like 40 years. 
and you're like like mind puzzles or like riddles and like or things that are just going to stretch our mind. No, it's not just what you do with it. It's not that kind of training. It, it's, it's actually more about what you put in it. It's more about what you put in it than it is about what you do with it. It's not training your mind just with simple anecdotes and mental drills and things like that. It's also about what goes into it. I want to show you in Paul's life as you watch the progression. We're watching the progression of him renewing his mind. And we're going to read out of his letter to the church in Philippi in Philippians 4. But I want to pray before we jump into it. Pray with me. God, my, my, my hope is always whenever we're gathered like this and when we open up your word that our focus is to meet with you. And out of that meeting with you, we just know and believe that we can be transformed. That your word has the ability to transform us. It has the ability to give us freedom. God, give us a, a, a wisdom to know that we can lean wholeheartedly on your word. That we can't always trust our word, but we can always trust you. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Hey, to give context, Paul writes this letter from a Roman prison. It's, like, it's kind of like house arrest. All right? Uh, he's locked up. Things are not looking good. All right, it would be very easy to be negative. God, why are you leaving me where, you're, where you've got me? Why, why have you forgotten about me? It would be very easy just to say, man, God's not in this all together. Right? But Paul's writing to the church. It's also, by the way, believes that he's possibly awaiting execution. This is not a good time for Paul. But he writes... And he says this, Philippians 4a, he says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Everyone say these three words with me. You ready? Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. I love how if you've got a, a new King James version of the Bible, it says meditate on these things. It says meditate on these things. Meditate is a little beefier than just think on, right? It feels a little bit more. It feels a little bit more. Now you would say, maybe many of us in the room would say meditate. Is that not like some new age stuff that, we're, you know, Christ following believers are supposed to be, you know, far away from. I mean, it, maybe it can be, okay, but I want to give us a different definition when it comes to meditation that's going to help us today. Here's the definition I want us to operate on. Are you ready? To engage in mental exercise that focuses one's thoughts. Engage in mental exercise that focuses one's thoughts. Let me just go ahead and tell you this. I told you I didn't want to give like uh, just a ton of like little anecdotes and a ton of little like here, do this, do that. Like today I am. Today I, I said some of that will come out. And today there's, we're, we're going to focus in on a little bit on, on some of this because it's going to take time to do what we need to do to take our minds back when they are taken captive. And so meditation is to engage the mental exercise to focus one's thoughts. It's to help you and I to focus. To focus on what? To focus on things that are true, honorable, right, pure. And when you have a consistent way of doing this, when you do this consistently where your focus is on God's truth, so that, that means, what does that mean when I say where your focus is on God's truth? That means you've spent time at the Psalm 23 table. Again, this is a starting point. Don't, don't go to step two and three, all right? You got to start at step one and go, I'm spending time with Almighty God. I'm spending time with my Heavenly Father, and I'm delighting in His Word. So what, that means we've spent time at the Psalm 23 table. We've been in God's Word. You're, you're getting His truth within your life, but now it's time to know some of His truths so well that you can sit and you can dwell and meditate on them. And I'm not talking about, and sometimes you got to do this, but I'm not talking about hours on end all the time, all right, because God does not want you just to simply read this and just, and just you know, for seven hours that day, just sit back and go, well, that's interesting. No, no, there, like, the, make no mistake about it, there's supposed to be action at the end of the meditation. 
They're supposed to be, when you look at this and you read this, and it's a, it's a love letter going, this is how I'm going to redeem the world. Anyone that calls on my name will be saved forever in Christ. And, and then he wants to work through you to burn bright for him so that other people might find him as well. So there's action, but but if, there, if you have a consistent way or consistent time about yourself where you are meditating and thinking on and dwelling on these truths, it will help you in your life. Well, Johnny, maybe you say, I don't know where you find all, all this time to, you, you read and pray, and then you think about what you read and prayed? Like, how do you have all of this time to do this? And let me just tell you this. There's times in your life, and you know this and I know this. Okay, I'll say this. I was explaining to, so my, my grandmother uh, passed away a few years ago. She passed away almost 91 years old, all right? And when she was, um, I want to say 89, <clears throat> uh, you know, it was some random weekday. I think it was the summer because my kids were, like, in the car with me. And we get a phone call and says, hey, Grandma is going to the hospital. This is what's going on. And I go, okay. And I got off the phone and I said, hey, you're not going to practice today. I mean, it was quick like that. And, you know, and I can't remember what child it was exactly. But they were just like, what? And I was like, yeah, listen, like circumstances like this, you know, when your loved ones get to a certain age and they go to the hospital, you just drop everything. Right, for that day, you just go in and go, how are things going, what are things, because again, th this is reality, I'm being very real with you, you don't know when the last time it is you're going to see them, so when they, you know, she's almost 90, we're going to go see her, she's in the hospital, we're going to see her, right, it makes sense, can I just tell you that if you're in here right now, and your, your mind is absolutely bound by the enemy, it is time when someone like me says, it's time to make more time to meditate on God's word, it's time to, however you want to do this, look in the mirror, just talk, close your eyes and talk to yourself and say, it's time to cancel the practice today. It's time to get the normal stuff off the schedule. Because the enemy has been at the table for a while. And I can't get up because I'm bound so it's, it's, not, it's not normal circumstances. It's not the same as just every day. It's time to say today's different. Today's different because the enemy's been sitting at my table for a long time. So I'm going to treat today differently. So yeah, we're not going to the normal Tuesday night practice. We're not going to the normal this, that, and the other. I'm, uh, we, you know, we're going to get picked up from school early today because there's some different circumstances on the table if your mind is bound, I'm just going to tell you right now, your circumstances are different, and you need to treat them that way. You're going to need this idea of meditation within your life to win the war in your mind if that's where your mind is. If you're already so scattered that this seems impossible, then the enemy is sitting at the table. I love how I think it's C.S. Lewis that says, uh, he says, if the enemy can't defeat you, he'll just, he'll just confuse you. He'll just confuse you. He'll just make you busy, confused. You don't know where things are coming from. If that's you, if you're so scattered and this, that this doesn't seem possible at all, then the enemy's probably sitting at your table. And I want—I love this, I, and I got this idea from another person. Maybe you've seen this. I'd love to quote from the prophet Jackie Chan. All right, because if this is you, if this is you from the Karate Kid movie, not the really good one, but the newer one, um, uh, you know, if this is you and you're like, oh, I can't do that, I don't have time to do that, and then I'll just, I'll just quote him, then your focus needs more focus. All right, that's Jackie Chan for you right there. I, you didn't know you were getting a Jackie Chan quote, but there it is. Then your focus actually needs more focus. He says, if we're going to have any, any way, any, if there's going to be a way to fix our thoughts, then we have to fix our mind on the things of God and train our minds to do this often. This is what helps renew our minds. This is what helps create those new pathways. Now, there is an exercise, and if you read the book, which a lot of this content through this series has come from, it's called Winning the War in Your Mind. All right, uh, a, a pastor out west wrote it, a really great guy named Craig Rochelle, uh, writes tons of books, great dude. Um, 
he, there's an exercise in that book, and, and so you'll see the very exercise that we're going to talk about today. It helps us meditate on God's truth in a way that renews our thinking, and that's what I want to do today. I want to give you a tool. I want to give you a tool, and this is not just someone that you're, maybe you need to take your mind back now. Maybe you've dealt with stuff mentally in the past, so you want to grab that tool, you want to put it in the toolbox and go, okay, I, need to, I, I may need to use this, or maybe my sister needs this, or my brother needs this, or my, my parents need this. So I want to go through an exercise that I believe could be super helpful when it comes to taking our time back. And it starts by answering two questions that I actually asked you last week. The first one is this, a stronghold is bringing you back. So you identify it. Is it lies? Is it fear? Is it shame? Is it guilt? Is, is it a negative thought? What's holding you back from living a purpose-filled life that God is calling you to? And then the second question, if you remember, I know everyone here remembers the second question. Um, that was a joke, by the way. Um, is what truth from God's word demolishes that stronghold? So those were our two next step questions last week. We're creating new pathways that are birthed out of God's word. So we're going to take God's word and we're going to take it and put it in a way that's going to replace the stronghold, right? That's where we came out of last week. But I want to go a little bit further and give you an exercise that's going to help us really specifically drive this into our lives. So when you find that truth, when you find that truth that demolishes the stronghold, I want you to do three things when you find that truth that's that's demolishes your specific stronghold in your life. I want you to do three things. Number one, I want you to write it down. I want you to write it down. Find a journal, find a notes app document, find a, you know, find something that you can actually write down that specific truth in God's word. Again, there's an assumption here that you are in God's word. All right, so don't don't say I tried that whole thing and it didn't work out, and you and it was like, well, you know, did you get to the Psalm twenty three table? Well, I did it the one time we talked about it. No, no, no. There's an assumption that you're 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 delighting in the Lord and you're getting into His Word. And when you find the strong the 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 truth that breaks the stronghold, I want you to write it. I want you to write down that truth. And then number two, I want you to think on it. I want you to think on it. And specifically, I want you to think about how good that truth really is and how grateful you are that God gives it to you freely, that he gives you what you need. He's the provider of what I need, and so he's got a truth that breaks the strongholds within my life. So we're going to write it down, we're going to think on it, and then number three, I want you to confess the truth. I want you to confess it. I want you to confess it, and that sounds kind of weird, but it sound, maybe it sounds, uh, just to help you out, maybe it sounds a little bit like this. God, I believe that you're calling me to do good works in this life. That's confessing a truth. God, I believe that you're, you're, you're calling me, uh, you know, away from, to walk away from the bottle, or to walk away from the screen, or to walk away from the jealousy that I've been dealing with, or the anger that I've been dealing with. That's confessing a truth. That's confessing a truth. Whatever it is that binds you, confess it until God begins to renew your mind to it. I like to say it this way. We're going to write it, think it, confess it until we believe it. We're going to write it, think it, confess it until we actually believe it. It may take time because we're creating new pathways that are renewing our minds with God's truth. I want to give you an example of this because I don't want you to think well, that sounds, you know, that sounds like it's up in the air and cloudy and kind of weird. And it would be if we were not talking about some absolute truth within our lives. All right. But I want you, I want to give you a tangible example. And just a few, this does not cover everything of what it looks like to go through this exercise and, and, and it be filled with God's word as well. Here's an example. So let's just say that your stronghold thought is, I don't know God's will. I just don't know God's will. Okay. Or you could say it a few different ways. I don't know what's life all about. I don't know my purpose. I don't know what does God want me to do with my life. Like you could say it a few different ways, right? That's a stronghold thought. Okay, that's a stronghold thought. This is, this is what you could write down. You ready? My, my life, I did the exercise. This is what I came to. My life belongs to God. Daily I seek him and daily he directs my steps. I know his voice, and he leads me to his perfect will. This is birthed right out of Romans 12, by the way. 
So I write down the stronghold. I find the weapon that breaks the stronghold in God's truth, and then I write it down. And when I write it down, I write it down. And what else? Come on, a little quiz right after. I write it. I write it down. I think on it, and then I confess it. Let's do it again. You ready? I write it. I think it. I confess it until I believe it. We write it down. Maybe, maybe that's not you. Maybe this. Maybe that doesn't resonate. Resignate. Sorry, Jim. And I'm just kidding. That's I'm just, that's an inside joke. I should not do inside jokes on the stage. I'm sorry. Maybe that doesn't resonate with you. Maybe your stronghold thought is, I just don't have what it takes. I'm inadequate. And, and you could say it in a couple different ways. You could say, I'm I'm not enough. Um, I'm going to fail. I'm a failure. You know, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I'm, I have a, a fear that if I step into something that God's calling me, I'm going to fail at it and I'm going to come up short. Whatever the way, this, all of that falls on this. I just don't have what it takes. I'm inadequate. That is a stronghold thought. <clears throat> well, then you could write something like this. My confidence is in Christ and Christ alone because his spirit lives within me. Come on. I can do everything he calls me to do. I can do everything he calls me to do. This is stuff that's birthed out of God's truth. This is God's word. And it's a little bit paraphrased, but you, we're going to write it. We're going to think on it and thank God for it. And then we're going to confess it until we believe it. And what you're doing is you're, you're replacing the stronghold thought with the actual thing that demolishes strongholds we're renewing our mind maybe you have a stronghold of, of shame maybe that's yours maybe it's shame and, and you're like i feel ashamed because of, of lust maybe that's maybe that's one that you deal with I've, I've got shame because of of lustful thoughts you'd write something like this i'm not a slave to lustful thoughts because God has purified my mind i will honor him with my eyes and thoughts my god is faithful even if i'm tempted he will always give me a way out. This is, par this is scripture. This is God's word, his breath on page that we're literally just putting down and writing down going, this is the truth of God's word that's going to break the stronghold. It's going to break the stronghold. This, it, it, listen, that didn't cover everything, but I'm, ho I'm hoping, I'm hoping that you understand that in, within God's word, the ability to break strongholds is here. It's here. It's delighting in it. It's meditating. Which, by the way, when you do this exercise, this all-encompassed is meditating. We are fixing our focus, right? We are. It's an exercise to help our thoughts focus. So we are focused in on the thought. We're focused in on the truth that breaks the stronghold thought. And you can do, listen, it may take time because you're creating a new way of thinking. That's exactly what's happening anatomically speaking. As you're creating, your mind is creating new pathways that are replacing Stronghold thoughts with God's truth that demolishes those strongholds. I hope you see how we're creating new thinking based on God's word to defeat the old ways of thinking. This is how, this is how we meditate on his word. If you've never thought about that, if, you've never, if it's not, that not been something in your own life, I would encourage you, start to meditate on his word in this way. It doesn't take forever, but I, I will say uh, the exercise does not take forever. The idea that the thought gets demolished might take some time. You might have to do this, the same, the same kind of exercise almost every day for the same thought for a really long time until you start to believe it, until you start putting anchors down in God's word, until his word starts to anchor down in your own heart. This is how we meditate and doing what Paul says when he says, fix your thoughts. This is what it looks like to fix your thoughts. See, it's not as, I don't want to say the word weird. It's not as weird and out there as you may think. Your brain is absolutely amazing. God created it that way. Sinful, broken world broke it. 
and everything goes into it, and our, our sinful flesh and brokenness, it allows things to get in there that God's going, that's, that's binding you. That's keeping you from the life that he's wanting to call you to. So Paul says, this is how you fix your thoughts. So when the enemy is trying to pull a chair up to the table, he's trying to put a thought into your mind, what are we going to do? We're going we're gonna to take a captive. We're going to take a captive. We're going to literally grab that thought. We're going to hold it up to God's word. We're going to see if it lines up. We're going to see if that particular thought lines up. And if it doesn't line up, then we're going to find the truth that demolishes the stronghold it has on us. And we're going to write it. And we're going to think about it. And we're going to confess it. And we're going to do that until we actually believe it. And God's word will begin to transform us. And our minds will begin to be renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit and the truth of his word. Let me ask you a question. How many of you know that God wants you to find mental, free, mental health freedom today? You can go ahead and stand up. I'll ask it again. How many people, we're going to enter into a time of worship. How many of you know that God wants you to find freedom today? How many of you know that God, the almighty God, wants you to find freedom from the things that have bound you today? Come on. Listen, if this is your story, if you've got this in your story, I have this in my story. If you've got this in your story, let me just tell you a couple things. First of all, you, you, you've got to be, you've got to be the the poster child for God wants to give you freedom because I've lived it. Because I've lived it. I also say this, if this is your story, you know how bound you can get. Some of you, you're there right now. You're there right now. I promised myself a few weeks ago that I'm going to start asking some questions on Sunday so that if you're in the middle of whatever we're talking about, you need to know that there are people around you that have been where I'm talking about. And they have seen the faithfulness of an almighty God. They have seen chains break. They have seen him come through. And so if you're in the middle of it right now, just know there are stories around you where God did not forget about them. And he came in and he delivered them through it. Walked with them in it and delivered them through it. Come on. If that is your story, I'll ask you again. Who knows that God wants to walk you to walk in freedom today? Who knows that? Who knows that? Let me pray for you, church. Jesus, there are people here today, and only, only you really know what's going on in their minds. Only you really know how stuck and bound they really are. But God, you, you're a sea-splitting God. You're a grave-robbing God. You're a God that makes a way. You're a God that sees something that's been, that's been dead. I mean, Lazarus was dead for four days. Four days. And it did not stop you from your plan. And it did not stop you from bringing someone that was dead back to life. So Jesus, right now in this moment, I'm praying that there are people that they can lift maybe what seems like tattered, bound, filled life. And they lift it up with, the, with every bit of maybe what it seems like a little, just, just an ounce of energy and life they have left and they just lift it up to an almighty God and they say Jesus help me Jesus help me because I need you with our eyes closed can I just and we're about to enter into some worship but if that's where you're at can you just raise your hand and say I need Jesus to help me when it comes to my mind I need Jesus help when it comes to my mind because he I'm bound and I need his help
God, you are working in this place. And my prayer is that as we put our focus and attention and keep our focus and attention on you, that you break the strongholds within these people's lives that are struggling. God, we need you. We need you and we ask that you move in a powerful way. It's in Christ's name. Amen. We're getting ready to sing a song here and it has some really powerful truths in it. And I know sometimes we don't always feel what we know God is telling us, but I encourage you to really hear these words, embrace them for yourself, know them in your mind, even when you're not feeling it. Because God wants you to believe great things of yourself and know that he is here with us. No longer I who live, but Christ in me, for I've been Forget the moment I heard you call my name out of the grip of darkness into the light of grace, just like Lazarus. Oh, you brought me back to life where there was dead religion.
a God that's in the business of bringing dead things back to life. That's who he is. That's what he does. So if you're seeing a lot, of, a lot of dead around you, just know you have an almighty heavenly father that sits on the throne and circumstances do not take him off of that throne. And he invites you to sit with him. To sit with him and begin to heal begin to break strongholds that song is a declaration for anybody that's been there before and seen the faithfulness of God which is absolutely you need to celebrate and celebrate his goodness and celebrate his faithfulness but sometimes if you're in the middle of a You've got to still celebrate his faithfulness and his goodness and know that he's not leaving you alone. That he's walking in it with you. Hey, if, if that's a part of your story, do me a favor because I, I just want to pray with you. If that's a part of your story, I want you to grab this card at some point. Or if you've got questions about anything related to the church or faith or the Bible or anything like that, you can do the same thing. But, but if, if today really through a dart into the story of God in your life, I want you to grab this card. I want you to write on the back of it, what's God doing right now? What's he doing in your life right now? And I want you to throw in that basket, and this is what's going to happen. I mean, if you want to know, it, it, it'll be me sending you a message tomorrow <laughs> and just saying, hey, we're, we're praying over what God's doing within your life. We're here for you. We want to be shoulder to shoulder with you when it comes to navigating growth and, and really either spurring you on and or celebrating his faithfulness within your life something I want to remind you of before I pray and we exit today is we're in a season of challenging ourselves, our church um, when it comes to a few different things this is, comes out of our, our vision series a few weeks back uh, but we have a, a few challenges on the, on the board already where we're, we've been challenged when it comes to prayer and if you've not been here, we've been praying specifically for the lost people that are around us. I just, I just asked you guys just to take one, two, maybe three at most specific people that do not have a relationship with Jesus and start to pray for them. That you know, not, not, not in general, no, that you actually know. People at your home, people in your business, people you know, that you sit on the bleachers with, people that you know. And start praying for them. And start praying that Jesus begins to work within their life. I would even go further and say, start to have conversations. Figure out a way to serve them. Figure out a way to care about them in that way too. But then the, last week we were challenged, um, and this is till the end of the year, with, our, with giving. With giving. And that is, our challenge is this. If this is your home, if this is your house, no matter where you're at, when it comes to giving right now, whether you're zero or you're a first fruits tither, means the first 10 percent uh, i ask you to take this challenge to to up at five dollars a week until the end of the year and that is it's much less about an amount uh, or how often uh, as it is about our hearts and stretching and seeing god be faithful and work within his people and through his people uh, and then on top of that today i would say this our, our if you're in our uh, vision series the last one that we said yes to was serving. It was serving. And so specifically speaking, um, this is what I want you to do. If this is your house and you don't have a role, that a team that you serve on, we call them difference makers because you're making a difference. If you don't have a, 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 a team of difference makers that you serve with on a Sunday morning and, and this is where you call your faith home, then that's our next step is to maybe you take this card and go, uh, maybe you say yes today, yes to serving. Uh, but I would, ask for, I would ask you to step into a role to, to stop just attending church and just understand that you are the church. You are the church. And there will be people that come to attend the church, but they come and you are there to receive them. 
You're there to receive them because you are the church and you, be, and you now understand that. There's been a lot of people that understand that and I'm so grateful for our difference makers. But there's a lot more people that God's saying, I want you on the team. I want you on the team making a difference. Let me pray for you. Jesus, thank you for pushing us, stretching us, calling us to take steps of faith. To take steps where we're growing in our faith. I do pray specifically. There were, there were six, seven, eight hands, probably more because I just couldn't see them, but that went up that said, I'm struggling right now. I'm struggling right now with a battle in my mind, with thoughts of, that, that are strongholds that bind me. God, we need you. We need your Holy Spirit to help deliver them, to help break the strongholds. My prayer is that they find a Psalm 23 table and they begin to approach your word relationally and not simply academically. Not like it's a drag because there's so many words, but it's that the, it's the word, it is the truth, it is the life, and we depend on it like air, like water, like food. We need it to live out the life we were created to live. And through that, they can replace their strongholds with the truth that demolishes it. Jesus, we need you. We can't do this on our own. We love you. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Have a great rest of your Sunday, church. Come on. Come on.
funny how things change in about a span of a year. Guess I didn't see it coming. Now there's blessings in here. And I was younger saying prayers to the big man upstairs. I told him if he walked on water, then I know I'm secure. I may have 99 problems, but my faith ain't one. And if I always try to solve him, what is faith anyway? I'll be okay. Okay. Yeah. And so if you feel me now, 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 you know what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about. Ain't no need to try to figure out. Well, God's already working now. Up. Shout out to my God, that's my guy for life. Never did me wrong. When I feel like I've had all I could take, like I'm about to break, he's the one I Laying down my rights, second guessing. 